Okay, guys, so the thing you need to remember with skips is you've got to remember that how it interacts with the ground is going to determine how it's going to skip. The angle of incident is going to determine the angle of reflection. And so you're always thinking, how is my disc going to come in, hit the ground, react to that ground, and then take off? So if you're coming in low, hits the ground, it's going to react with that opposite reaction low. If you're coming in high, it's going to hit and want to jump up higher. If it's on edge, it's going to want to hit and start spinning farther to the left. But if it's hitting flat, it's just going to keep on carrying straight. So those are the, the main things you got to think about how the disc is interacting with the ground. If the ground is level, everything's kind of pretty simple. Once the ground gets sloped or rocky or other things, all bets are off. It could do wild stuff. But as long as you can understand how it's coming into the ground is going to affect how it's going to take off, we can start from there. All right, let's go throw some. So you got three questions. Why would you throw a skip shot? When would you throw a skip shot? And how would you throw a skip shot? Well, the first one, why? First of all, it's fun. It's awesome just to watch that disc go kicking around. But most of the time, you're throwing a skip shot because you need to cut a harder angle or there's a low ceiling that you can't throw an air shot or you've just got to kind of get around something and you want to keep it low to the ground. The wind is whenever you find yourself trapped, it's often a utility shot that you're trying to get out of some woods and you've got a low shot that you've got to get under stuff before you can get out around. But also it's, it's where I need to make a turn that's harder than anything that I can throw regularly. Because what happens with a skip, if you do it right, it really cuts the corner and can almost get you 90 degrees or more angle around a corner. Whereas if I throw an air shot, I've only got so much turn that I can get around the disc or fade, I, hyzer, I can get around the obstacle. So when you're throwing a skip shot, you can actually get more penetration back around an object. And the how is really, you're just going to want to throw a disc and make sure it hits the ground at an angle that it's going to reflect, it's going to skip off of it and carry on and let that hyzer or whatever angle that that disc is on continue on around. Now most of the time you're throwing an overstable disc because you want that extra hyzer, that extra dig to go around. There's sometimes you can throw an understable that's going to not dig as much and it's going to travel more straight on to get a longer shot, but usually you're throwing a skip shot because it's a utility disc to get around something, a utility throw to get around something. So the thing to remember is that you want to make sure that when you throw that disc, it's coming in at the angle that you want it to reflect and jump. So for instance, if I need to get a big hard skip, I'm going to actually want to hit the ground earlier and come in at a higher angle so that when it hits, it reflects and jumps up higher and goes around. Whereas if I need to go out farther before it kicks around, I'm coming in at a lower angle so that it's hitting. Now you always want to hit on the hyzer edge so that it hits. Just that surface area here catches the ground and then takes off in that direction. And that's very important to keep an eye on what your ground is. Concrete, hard packed dirt, pine straw, those are wonderful things to skip off. A lot of times you've probably had that happen when you didn't want to hit something. But those are the things to look for. High grass, grabby stuff is not what you want to use. Sometimes you can get short grass that actually gets a pretty good skip, but a lot of times you're looking at pine straw, dirt, concrete, skip it off a road to get the best skips. Oh, the other thing is if you're throwing, let's say you've got to throw to something 100 feet away, but you're having to travel out here and skip around, you may be adding another 50 feet to it. So you're usually going to have to add a little more power to your throws. You're going to have to power up to get that skip shot because even as it hits the ground, it's losing some of its speed. So something to think about. All right, let's go throw some. Okay, here's an actual shot I've thrown many a times because I do have a little tunnel here, here, but a lot of times when it grows up, I don't have this tunnel shot. And all I've got is this shot through here and then around. And now as soon as it starts greening up, I lose some of my airspace too. So that's where a skip shot can really come in handy. Now for this one, I'm gonna throw a forehand and what I'm gonna to try to do is hit just at the top of that hill on angle and I'm gonna drive it into just past that root, hopefully. It's gonna hit the side of the hill and it's gonna reflect over and jump towards the basket. You see, if I, if I came over here 
and try to throw something like this. I can't get that disc to go around through those trees and get there, but I can skip something around and hopefully get there. All right, so now I'm just gonna take this. I hit a little early, but did you see how it flared up and carried over much harder than I could throw with a regular shot? Here's a thought. If you really wanna work on skip shots, play a one disc round and only throw skip shots except for the putts because that'll really help you kind of focus in on what you can do. Now granted, you need a course like this, not a big green grass course. Okay, today I'm using a felon. Most of the time you want to use something overstable because you want it to help you get that hyzer on edge and take the corner. Let me try one more time. Hits, hard right turn, I'm under the basket. Now I brought a couple other discs. You can do it with the mid-range but you got to give it more juice and it's got to hit right. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, a flip roller. Most of the time you're not wanting to use mid ranges unless you've got something overstable. Maybe my deflector could pull over, but see that disc because of the torque wanted to flatten up on me instead of catching edge. Thunderbird work. Any of the, the bigger rim discs will actually catch and skip a little bit better. And finally, a dimension. It's a 14 speed driver. That doesn't really matter right now. It matters that it's a, a speed three on the uh, fade. Large rim, good skipper. Skipper! And so just take some practice to get used to that. Okay, let's talk about some practice. Here I'm setting up some scenarios on this perfect hole with this great skippy pine straw to really get a feel for how the disc is gonna react. So I'm setting up like I've thrown a shot over here and this tree, everything is blocking me here. I've got one alley around this tree and this might be a perfect time to pull out your skip shot. So what I'm gonna to try to do is throw through this gap, have it hit near that tree, but on the right side of it and skip to the basket. Not too bad. It actually got extra skip and kind of put, put by the basket. And that's one of the downfalls. You got to think about speed regulation to make sure you don't overpower it. But let's throw a couple more. Tried to shorten that one up just a little bit. How about one in between? All right, not bad. Now let's try this rock. This, beat up old rock. Let's see if we can do something with it. Had terrible results earlier, but let's try this. <laughs> Do you notice how it wanted to fight and stay lower and skip out instead of cutting back around? That's the difference between a stable disc and a flat disc or an understable disc. That rock's kind of beat and it's wanting to go long instead of cutting hard to the left. So you need to choose your disc wisely when you're doing a skip shot, usually over staple, not always. Okay, so that was pretty moderate skip shots. Uh, I'm gonna try something a little more extreme. Hopefully it'll work out. I'm gonna go almost 90 degrees off the basket and try to really flare something over here to show you how much of an angle you can get. All right, I've got no shot to the basket. I have one little alley here. The, the, the ground is up sloping but that's gonna help stop the disc. It's gonna help me flare up a little, but also slow the disc down. Okay, so now, let's try this. <laughs> what happened is the slope of the hill actually made it anti-skip. Instead of coming in like this, it picked it up and threw it back the other way. Let's try again. So knowing how the slope was, I had to really crank it on hyzer, almost throw it vertically to try to get it to skip around. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> I caught a branch, I caught a little stick, and it knocked it out. That's the danger of skipping. Your ground is in play. This is what I hit, and I didn't even see it. Killed that skip shot. So always be aware of what's going on on the ground. All right. So here I am over here. All I've got is this alley to the left. So 
I don't have a lot of distance to go, but I've got to be careful with my skip. So I'm going to power it down just a little bit and let it flare and hopefully die near the basket. Let's try it again. Caught a root, but I think it still fought its way over there. One more. And so you can see it becomes very handy as a scramble shot, but there's always a joker in the pack because if it hits a stick or something like that, it can get a little extra squirrely. But I'll take any of these shots any day. So anyway, I hope that helps you. I hope that inspires you to maybe get out and start practicing some, some skip shots, having some fun. Listen, it's fun just to skip these things. Watch this thing. Nobody's here. That's just fun. I'm sorry. Get out there, have some fun, learn some new stuff, and relax a little. We're throwing frisbees in the woods. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right. So here, it's not that far, and we're going to pretend I've got no access over here, and maybe there's some low-lying branches that are keeping me from doing this. Now, now we're throwing on grass here, so it should slow things up. So I need to throw a little bit more power, but hopefully I'm not going to have to worry about it skipping too far past it. The grass grabbed it, which caused it to leap up higher, but also shorten its flight. <laughs> I pushed that one beyond it. That wasn't my, I was trying to aim earlier and it hit and kind of tugged out. And that one worked out pretty good. Practice. Practice, practice. All right, I'm gonna try that one more time. Instead of, now I can't go through here. I'm blocked off this way. I gotta go around this tree this way. Do you notice each one of the discs has a little bit different personality? That dimension wants to skim and it wants to slide. It's kind of like a snake wants to slide through where the uh, Thunderbird tends to hop up a little bit more and that felon tends to want to cut but burn through some stuff. So got to learn your disc. All right, so let's try to have a little fun here. Woo, almost got it. Skipping for the basket, if you miss it, it's going by it. Ah, it's too long. Too much. Boy, that Thunderbird is hoppy. <laughs> okay, so throwing farther away is no different. You're just picking your landing spot and what kind of angle and power it's going to have when it hits that basket. So now I'm going to try to hit, I'm going to be over here to the left just a little bit. I'm going to try to skip right at between those two trees, hopefully, and then get a nice flare and pop it up towards the basket. I hit a pine cone and it just took all the skip right out of it. Remember the ground play. You've got all these little pine cones. They could really ruin your day. Let's try it again. Oh. <laughs> or your little noodle arm could ruin the day. Okay, so personality-wise, this guy's kind of my most reliable out of these three. I've never really thrown him before, 
but this one's kind of doing what I think it should do. This one's more hoppy. It pops up and wants to flip more, kick up in the air more. And this one wants to burn through. Now this is a 14 and this is a nine and this is a nine. So these are more kind of your utility discs in a sense. And this is just a, your, your burner, but it will, if you need to throw and get it low and just really crank around and slide around, this is the disc for you. All right, let's try this again. See how it hits low, see how it hits low and wants to burn. All right, Thunderbird should be hoppy. And finally, the Felon, it should be more of a consistent, harder turn to the left. I gave you a little extra juice, but Okay, here's another real world example. I've, I've landed over here and the bushes hanging here are blocking anything up high and the tree limbs, there's not a real shot here. I could try to maybe bend something around here, but the problem is if I do that, I'm probably likely gonna pull it back into the, the water. So a skip shot might make more sense right here. kept the water out of play and I was able to bend it around, get that hard turn back to the basket. This one's going to stay a little lower. Let's see if we can burn this one around. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? I missed my ground mark there and I hit a root or something and it killed it. That's when it sucks. Woo. So there you go. Some options, something to think about when you're playing skip shots.